Hi, this is James O'Keefe. I'm captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, and I'm joined today by our usual guests, uh, Joseph Onorowski and Steve Revelak, and a special guest today, uh, <clears throat> Drew Bingaman from Pennsylvania and also chair of the United States Pirate Party. Um, how, are the, how are the four of you doing today? Uh, actually, three, sorry. <laughs> Math's wrong. Four of, us, uh, four of us together. We are comrades. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't complain. I mean, I could be in office, but I can't complain. Thank you for the, the three of you. Um, so we've had a slight change. We think we're, we're waiting on the final uh, approvals, but we believe our winter conference will instead be Sunday, uh, January 19th. Uh, we had to move things around based on the location uh, we were able to find. The nice thing is it's wheelchair accessible, easily accessible from the street, uh, on bus lines, close to the MBTA, and it has parking. So, uh, plus there's food. So, <laughs> it's, uh, so we're, we're waiting for the final approvals, um, and we'll uh, notify you with those uh, details when all that is ready. So uh, we have two segments today. Uh, the primary one is Joe's campaign. Joe, why don't you lead us off? Thanks. Uh, and you know what? I also just wanted to quickly shout out that I, I know Thanksgiving is coming up and from all of us pirates to you, um, I just wish you and your families to have the most wonderful time to celebrate it is a national holiday that means a lot to all of us and i'm truly grateful for all the support that i have gotten and truly grateful to all of my fellow pirates and truly grateful for all of you so uh, i hope that you guys get to enjoy enjoy your holidays uh coming up and just want to say thank you now going into the campaign um I did fairly well for somebody who's never campaigned before in their life. Um, I got 22% of the vote, though in the area, not to toot my own horn, but in the very area in which I was campaigning, I saw only a 3% increase in that vote. So I got 25% instead of the 23%. And so what that really tells me is that what I was really getting wasn't necessarily winning over hearts and minds, but people who were voting against Vanna. And so I think to me, there's a lot of room to grow in order to reach people and or to get people to really understand who I am. And a big part of that too is I went into this whole campaign with no literature, nothing but just my grit and my will to do it. And that will wasn't always there. I wasn't as consistent as I could have been. I wasn't able to get in front of as many people as I should have been able to get in front of. So I think that when two years comes from today or from two years comes up, uh, not only am I going to be trying to get in front of more people, um, I think a big part for me is the consistency. It's going to be having the materials already written up and ready to go, all the account, bank account ready to go, all of the information ready to go, having all of my ducks in a row, all of my stuff for personal, all squared away so that I can just focus on doing what I have to do next. So, and, and really the conversations that I did have throughout my campaign, I had very few people disagree with me very few people that didn't think that we needed more transparency or we need to make sure that we're upholding individual freedoms, individual rights, that we need a balanced budget. Um, all of my talking points, it didn't matter if they were Republican, Democrat, uh, space alien. It didn't matter if they were pirate or they were for staying at home. Everybody agreed that the government should be doing what it needs to be doing and not worrying about all the extracurricular stuff and need to get back down to basics. And so I had a very, the conversations I did have, I had a lot of them in support. 
uh, even people that were normally staunch Democrats um, were, were for me, you know. And occasionally I got the people who were like flipping off Vanna and giving me the thumbs up and stuff like that. So, you know, there, there were people who were um, very much for me and against Vanna. But at the same time, um, I think a large part of my vote was people not voting necessarily for me, but voting against Vanna. And I think with my next campaign, I really want to change that and make them want to vote for me because I'm the best person for the job. Uh, your thoughts? I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. So, Drew, what what was um, what was your biggest challenge in this whole campaign? Like anything from any anything you 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 ran into trouble with that you. You didn't see, or you did foresee, but you, you know, still was. Tough. Well, I knew that. I knew that um, running into people that want that there were two things. There was the the time wasters that would want to just sit there and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and but then some of the people that wanted to talk to me the most are the people that were like, I don't agree with you, but I'm just going to sit here and talk with you, you know, and. I would have to say that that was a real thing. And I didn't realize it would happen to the degree that it happened. And being able to politely excuse myself without upsetting anyone. If somebody's not going to vote for me, uh, th okay, that's fine. Um, being able to disengage from that is going to be important. The other thing was definitely the materials. Having those materials up front, being like, hey, these are my talking points. Here's literature to follow up with it. Here's a way to get in contact with me, no matter what. Um, because a lot of this campaign, whenever somebody was like, hey, how can I find out more about you? I would direct them just back into the Mass Pirates, into the U.S. Pirates, into the Pirates International. Even with the ability, I didn't leave up any email for them to contact me because I wanted them to go through the Mass Pirates in order to get in touch with me. I wanted them to be able to go through the U.S. Pirate Party or the Pirate Party International to really, to really see what what our organizations are about. And so, I think a big part for me was not just my name recognition or the fact that I'm a pirate who's running. They're like, "Oh my God, what's a pirate?" I wanted to answer the question, "What's a pirate?" more than I wanted to say, "Hey, elect me." And I think that I should have said, "Hey, elect me." By the way, I'm also a pirate who, and this is everything that we've stood for for all this time. Mm -hmm. So I was less concerned about me and saying, hey, I'm a perfect person for this job versus saying, hey, the pirate party is pretty awesome. You should be one of us. And so I, I think I kind of had that uno reversed on that. Yeah, one thing uh, one of uh, my mentors always told me is, is when you're campaigning, you you want to you want to have a speech as to not why they want you why they need you. Mm. So if you can come up with some if you can come up with something that gets you that covered that can really um, that can really help. It, it's just a it's a psychological thing, you know. Uh, like well, everything I think a big, is. <laughs> I think I'm sorry to interrupt you, Drew, but no, that's fine. Uh, I already have that. Because the whole election that happened this time, uh, everybody elected to have the auditor have authority to go and do oversight for the legislative body. And my whole campaign was trans transparency of the legislative body. And so I was in alignment with what the auditor was do trying to do. And what did the first thing that they did as soon as they got elected, they shut that down immediately. Just shut it down completely or made it so that it was actually completely pointless for the art or to have that such authorities, you know, that's, that's, uh, yeah, it, it yeah. transparency is something that our current government does not like, even though it's kind of been shoved down their throats a little bit. So, um, I do, so I have another question, uh, what did you find what did you find in this campaign surprisingly easy 
Uh, it would honestly just, once I got going, having conversations and how many people actually just amazingly agreed with me. When I got in front of people and they saw that I was a logical human being that just wanted to do better um, and wanted to just listen to what they had to say. Because when I was talking to them, I'm like, I wasn't just saying, hey, this is what I'm campaigning for and just follow me and it doesn't matter what you're saying. I would always make it a point to ask them, how is the government failing you? And that the the feedback that I got was so good and so consistent. Everybody complained about how much they're getting taxed, yet how little benefit, how bad the roads were, how bad literally everything that could be simply fixed with a balanced budget. And then what it just everything that they complained about just led back into one of the core staples of what it is to be a pirate with, you know, bringing things back, bringing back transparency to fight corruption, bringing back uh, common sense politics, bringing into a scientific method to make sure that we're looking at the data to make sure that the policies that we set are of sound mind and sound body and do the greater good, you know? And so it just, you know, and really one of the things that where people want to talk to me about, is like, well, gun control and I'm all for people owning guns, but being also at the same time being responsible for it. And so making sure that you're doing your training, making sure that you're handling responsibly, making sure that it's stored in a way that nobody else can get to it unless it's you who has been trained and knows how to handle it, you know, just common sense stuff that should be done, you know? And for the and record, so, firearms training isn't really that big of a deal. Um, it's, it's very, very basic. Um, well, it's 16, I think it was 12 or 16 hours now in Massachusetts for it, but well, I that, agree that's with your those. That's what, that's your, that's your required that's the required hours for for a permit right yeah and that's the basics uh that and ha being able to form logical thought and make make sure that you're just not somebody someone who could think and have common sense so well, that's a lot harder to legislate though uh yes and no that's why it depends on what area you're in and um you know, and the references and stuff like that. So, uh, again, Massachusetts um, does it in a way that they want people who can prove it, it takes a couple extra steps because they want to, one, make sure you're determined to do it, but two, that you can prove that you can use sound judgment. And having that sound judgment means that you're not going to just go out there and try and do something foolhardy with it unless you absolutely have to use it you know um it's it's just an interesting way of approaching the situation it's not like we most of the officers that i have met in my path to get firearms they want you to have a firearm because if you're of sound mind and you're not just going to use it and uh use it as only a last resort then that's one more person that they can reliably trust that they'll use it in an emergency situation and nothing else. And um, responsible gun owners are generally better for the society because the responsible gun owners stop tyranny. You know, and there's a lot, tyranny takes a lot of different forms. So... It sure does. We're learning question? about that. <laughs> I th I think so. I think we we got a little bit extra in there, but that's all right. That's all right. Everybody appreciate that. Um. So what? What? Let me, one more question. Uh, when you said you're you're talking about doing this again in 26. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, next time to get yourself uh you know get your name out there, maybe talk to more people at a time. Uh, you know, you could all, you know, something that's not very expensive to do, like 
in the East Coast, I understand that renting a hall does cost a little bit of money. But, you know, you could do, like, just invite people to have, like, a meet and greet with some coffee and donuts or something like that. And just invite people to a room where you'll be for three or four hours to just talk to people. And, you know, let people that are interested or, you know, once you're, especially, like, once you're a candidate, you know, what other, what other things do you, have you thought about that you could do better? Well, that's when I talked about time management, that was actually one of the big things. So where I was just relying on the volunteers, either through the mass pirates or doing volunteers through um, either mass pirates or, or what have you, I think setting up my own volunteer base directly underneath me um, and Here's the whole thing with the campaign is it is an organization. So having that second in command who is a little bit more active um, because my second command agreed to do it without putting too much effort into it because of their own situation. Whereas on my next campaign, I need to find somebody who's going to be my second in command who can do it and be very active in my campaign. And so with my next campaign, my plan is to, every time we go out at least once a week, if not more, and at the beginning of that, have us all meet up together at a specified location, wherever that location may be, we'll target an area, we'll go out from that location, and then have a meeting both at the beginning and at the end to make sure to see how our results were. So if we were planning on, say, doing a four-hour blast, we spend the first 15 minutes to a half an hour organizing, handing out materials, stuff like that. You go this way, you go that way. And having that feedback loop of, hey, when we go to people's houses, when we go knocking on doors, to say, hey, do you want to volunteer? We meet every week, you know and do like that and then that's an excuse for me to bring an unreasonable amount of coffee and be able to drink more than my lion's share of coffee and campaign even harder so it's a good excuse for that yeah oh god but just having that organizational key where uh we make it a thing where we're hey we're going to meet here here are all the volunteers and being able to ask hey we're doing this campaign. Do you want to donate? Do you want to volunteer? And just have that built into part of our, um, part of who we are so that we're knocking on doors. We're talking to people We're because my goal is to talk to as many people face to face. I don't ever want to be a politician. That's like doing a mass mailing. I came really close to doing a mass mailing during my last campaign but it kind of goes against the type of politician I want to be. I want to be a politician for the people. Direct mail does work. I mean, it does get your name out there. Um, It gets your name out there. It gets your name recognition, but it takes away the personal connection. It's just another, it's just another thing to help, you know, spread your, spread your word. And you don't, and you don't have to make it a complete piece of junk mail, you know, you could you could you could distinguish yourself by not making it a, a typical, uh, you know, this guy sucks and you know whatever, kind of you know piece. So I I think I just know that from from past experience that direct mail does does work and and I know just I mean everybody knows just from seeing all the garbage you get in the mail, you you see those names if those names are printed on that thing on that card very prominently it, it still makes an impression on you and sometimes only a one little impression can uh really put you in in their favor and they say you know look like you had some decent stuff on your flyer even if they only glanced at it so it's definitely and, you, not, know, not, you know it, it's it's a cost but you know you have to weigh how how best you can use your resources and that's that's ultimately up to you but you're not wrong drew that it is an effective form but it is not the form it to me it's not the form that i want to present myself and the reason for it is because i want them to know to be able to have that conversation and part of that is the their ability to how many okay 
let me rephrase it in this way. How, how, how many wait, people? Hey, hey, so this, I mean, just let me just throw this at you. Uh, okay. You use the direct mail as an invitation to your live event. And just say, hey, here's, I'm the candidate for the seat here. Come, you know, I'm going to have, you know, come talk with me. And here's where I'm going to be. And everybody can come. That know? was my exact you know, thought. And, Thanks for saying that, Drew. You know, that's that's not a bad approach. Um, to do, Especially if we're going to be doing a, a larger event right towards the end. Um, and, the thing is, and the thing is, not everybody's going to come. But I think everybody will appreciate that you that you said that you reached out like that, you know. So I you know think, that's I think not a bad positive, idea. I think that's a positive thing. But you know, you might have just changed my mind on that. <laughs> but uh, the reason why I was always against it was because of the fact that I wanted them to be able to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to be able to have the conversation with me uh, directly. And I think to me, politics should be about who is who is the one who is actually in charge and to me if i'm a politician i am to serve the people not the other way around i'm not going for the position in order to in order for them to be like oh joe's the best no joe's just a guy and just a guy trying to do a job mm -hmm. and to me that's what it is and it's become so celebrity like and I'm not a celebrity. I'm not, I, I might have some common sense. I might know a trick or two, but at the end of the day, I'm just a guy that sees something that he does not like and wants to change it. And, you know, it's not about being getting on a high horse, but to approach the position with the proper humility and realize that i don't have all the answers i don't know everything i just want to make the changes that we can so that those who come behind me and those who are elected behind me and those who have to vote behind me can make the changes that need to be made i want to make sure that we hammer in the transparency so that we can see where the corruption is so that those who come behind me can come and fix the system as it needs to be fixed and that's that's really where i come from on that i don't see myself as special to the system i see myself as a piece of the puzzle that needs to be plugged in in order for the system to start being fixed and you can say all of that in direct mail Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can. You absolutely can. No, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to give Howard a, any ideas. Uh, but if you look at the next two years, um, you have the opportunity to do things that she doesn't do. So <clears throat> she hasn't had a competitor largely in the general election. So she can take those votes for granted. Like, come you know once all the once it's, it's you know once it's the end of may and she knows if she has an opponent or not she can just coast and she can send out a mailing before the before the election hey vote for me or don't she's going to win anyways right but you have the opportunity over these next two years to be able to reach out to people agreed by going to door to door i mean whenever i'm doing a campaign training i stress that you know you there's two there's there's a duality of you know doing the the door to door engagement of voters in order to identify voters that you can then turn out and you get out the vote effort but you and and you know you need to do that but having like each month you're in a different precinct and it is someone hosts you and um, you send out a mailing, hey, this is going to happen. You have the event and then maybe you go door to door or you do the mailing and then you go door to door and then you have the event. However you want to structure it, you're, you're giving people an opportunity to come, find out about you and hopefully get engaged in the campaign and hopefully get engaged in the pirate party. Um, and those mailings going out ahead of time? will give you cred when you knock on somebody's door yeah. you know you you can start off with like you know i'm i'm your you know i'm your candidate for state rep 
and uh, you you might have seen my flyer that came in the mail. If you, that you know that's okay if you didn't, but you know that's it does it. People again, people have already seen your name, so if you show up at their door, they are immediately relaxed. It's you know. So, and yeah, it's all good even, stuff. Sorry. No, don't go ahead, Jamie. I was just finishing up. And and even if they're not there, you can always leave a door hanger flyer on there. Sorry, I missed you. You know, I was hoping to engage with you and and find out what your concerns are over the you know the state the state uh, the Commonwealth. You know what what issues are, are what issues most concern you. And if you, you know, and that can be, hey, if you want to reach out to me, here's my phone number, give me a call, send me an email, go to my website, there's a sign up form, and people can get in, you know, either get involved or at least reach out to you. Yeah, that that sounds fantastic. You know, I, I told, I said, I definitely wanted to learn how I could be doing this better. So I appreciate all the feedback. These are all just solid campaign strategies for anybody, honestly. Uh, you know, and and it's it's the smaller your area, the smaller your precinct or or, or whatever your, your what you want to call your you know your your electorate. Um, it's you know the, the less expensive that stuff is, and the less intensive that is, because it's easier to go door to door in a in a in a just a small neighborhood than it is to go across a city. So you know. But um, yeah, if you, that's just these are all great strategies that that are, are proven to work. Even though a lot of people will say on the face of it that they hate them, but you know, especially the, the direct mail. Um, I would say probably the thing that that again gets your name out there are the stupid spammy text messages too, which are a lot more scummy than the than than the than the direct mail and. So I don't know. I don't. I haven't made up my mind about them yet. They're still pretty new. The 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 massive text messages. It's when you don't when you don't opt in. Like I would literally get it from this organization, uh -huh. that organization. It's like I'd never, you know. Yes, you're a candidate from a Democratic candidate from some district somewhere in the U.S. And I get these things, and it's like mm -hmm. I didn't ask to be on your list. Right, I think that would be then the ethics of the 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 phone list that you use is probably, you know, um, where the discussion would be. You know, or do you do you only use people that have signed up for you, or do you, you know, do you do you try to get everything in your area for your campaign and then you know let people an easy way to unsubscribe, that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's, I, mean that's, I get so that, much. I get so much spam from the Democrats. It's not even funny. Yeah, I mean, this this election was terrible. <clears throat> this is this is the worst one yet with those with those text spam. Um, so, like I said, I'm still personally, I'm st the jury is still out on whether it, they're good or or people just despise them. So, looking at the results, um, I mean, when I when I went through the results and broke them down. I mean, you you did twenty two percent, which is better than any Massachusetts pirate has ever done, and maybe better than any U.S. pirate has ever done. Um, so, congratulations on that. But like, nearly as many people as voted for you left it blank, and so that to me is those people didn't know about you, um, and so being able to reach out to them. Uh, is vital. And then, you know, if you could, if you could get that, that group, then it, it really, you don't have to peel away too many Howard people in order to win. Um, and so, you know, keep that in mind. This is, this is winnable. Yeah. If you get all those undecided voters, you're going to be close to 40% there. And then, I mean, if you start feeling like you're that strong of a candidate, it's not that far of a cry to actually win or win that race. So I think it's, it's very viable. I had quite a few people that were like, oh, my God, I vote for Howard. But after having a conversation with you, I regret that. And it was just like, you know. Yeah, a lot of times you only need to plant a seed, you know. Show somebody you're a reasonable guy, and sometimes that's all it takes. And willing to talk and listen to people. 
Well, I mean, again, to me, it's, I don't think Howard, a lot of the times when I had conversation with people, people were like, who's Howard? And I'm like, this is one of our, your leaders of in the state house who's supposed to be fighting for you. And you have no idea who this is um, because that's, because that's how much of an impact. Their team. That's because people vote for their team and they don't vote. They don't vote with their brains. And, and, and they haven't, <clears throat> Howard hasn't had any competition for so long. And so um, one of the big things about it too, is just, I, I've never seen any campaigning from Howard. Even when this year, when I saw one ad from her the entire time and then signs at the end, like she just rode the coattails of her, of the democratic party the whole way, almost her entire career. Um, you know, I mean, I've seen her name in the paper a whole bunch for like normal issues, but literally all she does is rub elbows with the, the high mucky mucks. And that's pretty much it. You know, she's just another, another one of the, the chosen culty type ones in the inner cabal. And they're, they're called aristocrats. I guess I believe and we that don't was like the word them. For it. <laughs> and not the comedy routine. Not the comedy routine, no, no. Or the magic deck. <laughs> oh, the magics. MTG for the win. Um, but as far as who she is, she's when you vote for her, you're voting for corporate America. And, you know, it's uh, the people are just have had enough of it. And they really have. And again, those conversations. And the fact that what my goals are and the fact that I, I want to just do what I need to do and then move on, um, really speaks volumes as to the type of person I am versus the type of person she is. She's in it for a long haul in order to make a paycheck and do what she's told. Whereas I'm just not really good at following orders. So, Well, we're pirates after all. I mean, I yeah. want to steal back our government, so I suppose <clears throat> that's true. So, um, Joe, uh, are you comfortable leaving off at this point? Or is there more questions you have for us that we could help with? Uh, you know, I've always had more questions, but I just want to make sure that if anyone wants to run... Uh, I will always be a resource. Jamie has been a phenomenal resource for me and has done a lot for me, to, especially to kick me around the Kirk tails and get me going. And um, I think that um, my final thoughts on it are, you know, just go and do it. Don't think about it so much, you know, and keep trying. And I think that's that's the difference between what we've seen candidates out of the pirate party. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay as a pirate and I'm going to keep on running until we get in. And I think that's what I commit. That That's my big commitment for us. Now we're going to go and go and go, and we're going to build this momentum. Thanks Joe. And just as a reminder, um, 2025 is now, you know, as far as I know, we're going to have local elections. So, uh, you know, it's town elections and followed by city elections in November. And every town has a different uh, election schedule. So we're in the process of reaching out to all of them, identifying all of our pirate voters so we can reach out to them, tell them about the conference, tell them about things we are working on, as well as encouraging our uh, members and supporters to run as pirates in municipal elections. So if that's something you're interested in, by all means, send us an email, info at masspirates.org. There's a sign up form for, uh, for supporters on our website at masspirates.org. Um, you know, Joe did wonderful work uh, this year and we'd like to see more people running next year and the year after. So with that, Steve, you had an update. Well, since it's Thanksgiving, you had a turkey update. Yeah. Well, uh, after the after that really awesome uh, 
you know, an inspiring uh, conversation between Dr Joe and Drew. I have a boring public interest story. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, it's Thanksgiving. Turkeys are a thing for, for Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, the Boston Globe uh, in the last day or two ran a, a story about wild turkeys. So wild turkeys used to be pretty common in Massachusetts. They were here before settlers arrived. Um, we did hunt them to basically hunt them out of existence in the mid 19th century. But starting in the 1970s, there was an effort to sort of repop rebuild the wild turkey population, starting with, you know, maybe uh, three dozen ish birds that were brought over from New York into the Berkshires. And, and this effort has continued. And now, you know, we have like 30 or 35,000 wild turkeys in Massachusetts. Um, in Cambridge, we joke that they are the crossing guards or, you know, traffic enforcement. Um, Brookline, Brookline has a lot of turkeys. They, I, I think the bird has become more or less the unofficial ma mascot of the town. Uh, and in Arlington, we have, you know, here we have a couple of, you know, there's a group of about six of them that just kind of walks around and pecks at, you know, grass and people's lawns and, and, you know, does turkey stuff. But, um, you know, one of the things that the article talked about, well, you know, there have been incidents where turkeys have chased people, where, you know, the turkey will attack its image in a car or something like that. And, you know, so the, the, how to, how to, um, how to act around a wild turkey. Well, for the most part, if you don't bother them, they don't bother you. But if you have one that's being a little aggressive, you know, they're trying to show you that you are the top turkey or that they are the top turkey. You have to show them that you are the top turkey. And they'll leave you alone. So that is uh, that is your Thanksgiving special from me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Uh, so thank you, Drew, for joining us. Thank you, Steve and Joe. And thank you, the viewer. Uh, we hope you've gotten this far and found this particular pirate news uh, informative. Again, you can check us out at masspirates.org. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to join our mailing list. Uh, as well as, um, you know, volunteer, donate. We need all those things. So with that, uh, thanks again to the three of you. And uh, thanks again to everyone. Have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. Um, may you have time, wonderful long weekend with your family, hopefully. So with that. And thank you, Jamie. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. My pleasure. Bye, folks. <laughs>